So, after I've understood what Islam is and what it isn't, now I can talk about what is Dawah. The word Dawah often is translated as invite. Most of us have used the word invite or invitation. True or false? Okay, there's a problem with this. It's not totally wrong, but there's a problem. Why? Because it comes from a root Dawah. Dawah. What is that? A call. Whenever you make dua, you're calling on Allah. Yeah? It's the same word. Dawa. Dua. Dua to Allah. Dawa to the people. So you're calling the people. This is not really wrong to say that somebody's inviting them. Don't get me wrong. But you can't use it the other word the other way and say I'm inviting Allah to what? <laughs> No, you're calling on Allah. Okay, we got that out of the way. We understand what the word means. Now, is there any obligation to do it? Well, I started off today's talk with the verse from the Quran. Kuntun khayru umtun ukrijet linnas ta'maruna bil maruf wa tanhauna anhum unkar wa tukminuna billah. Look at this ayah and think about it. By the way, this is not the whole ayah. There's some more very important information after this, applicable especially to the people you're giving the da'wah to, the Jews and Christians. But we'll come to that in a minute. But look at this. It says you're the best of nations raised up because you call to al-maruf and you forbid al-munkar and you believe in Allah. Anybody here see something wrong with that? You say, it's from the law, brother. There's nothing wrong with it. Hold on. I don't mean wrong in the senses. But I'm saying in our thinking, what have we missed here when we heard this? All right, let's go back to Surah Baqarah and then go back to Surah 103 Al-Asr. Through the whole Quran, and from this point to that point, we're constantly hearing, Alladina amnu wa amilu salihat. Yes or no? We've heard it over and over and over. Those people who come to the right iman, aminu, wa amilu, and do the right deed, salihat, of the righteous. Isn't that true? Which came first, iman or amu? Faith, then action. Is there such a thing in Islam that you can do something and then turn around and get your faith later on it? It doesn't make sense. What is the first hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari? Kitab, Kitab al-Iman. Do you know? On the authority of Omar, radiallahu anhu, Qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Inna ma'amalu bin niyad. He said that every action is all depending on the intention and will be recorded and regarded and rewarded as such. True? Good news. But if you don't have any intention, how would it count? So how can you do deeds and you don't believe in the law? But look what it says. Amar bil maruf wa tanana anhim munkar wa tukminun bila. Tukminun bila is last. It's the only place in the Quran that we found it like that. So we went to the sheikh and we said, hey, does this mean anything or is it okay to, to have a different juxtaposition of the words in there like that? He said, no. He's smiling. Ah, you found this. Yeah, what, what does it mean? The words that I said to you, I left in what language? Arabic. I didn't say really what Maruf and Munkar was, did I? In this ayah, Maruf and Munkar is not the regular Amal. Otherwise, it would have to take a different position. This Amr order that's being given to do Al-Maruf is talking about La ilaha illallah. And the Munkar is the thing that takes people away from La ilaha illallah. 
And the Sheikh said, how could you say that you believe in Allah, but you're not willing to do these two things? So in this respect, that is the call to Islam. The call to Islam to call the people to what is right and righteous. And the most righteous of all is to believe that there really is a God and you're going to have to stand up one day and pay for what you're doing. And we say, put the fear of God in them. Yes, because if people don't fear God, what will they fear? If somebody will lie against God, if somebody will cheat God, what will they do to you? Stop and think. So this is why it's imperative for us to do that, to begin with that.